I'm starting this video for a couple of reasons. Number one being that I stayed up until after one o'clock in the morning last night finding all of the photo booths in America and starring them on my Google Maps. Why did I do that, you ask? I have absolutely no idea. That's just how my brain works. But I was on my phone for the whole day yesterday. I just fell into a bottomless pit of the internet. If you've been on my channel for a little bit, you know that I really, really strive to not be on my phone. Everything that I do in life, at work, even creating content is to find like the beauty and the joy in the small things in life. And it's really hard to do that when I'm super glued to my phone. So it's constantly a goal of mine to be better, to be more intentional, to literally put my phone down and look up, to read, to travel, to do all of the beautiful good things in life. And I've been slacking. But this week we are going to be trading my phone screen time for reading time. So we're gonna be looking at my screen time report for last week. Today's Tuesday, so yesterday, Monday, I had my rough day on my phone all day. So we're gonna start today on Tuesday. So we're going to do Tuesday through, I don't know, maybe Saturday and <laughs> look at how much I spent on my phone and read every day for that amount of time. Okay, so I'm going to do see all activity and then I'm going to do week and then I'll go to last week. Last Tuesday, I spent five hours and 49 minutes on my phone. Oh my gosh. So today we are going to be reading for five hours and 49 minutes. So I feel like my average time is like 5.20, five and a half, which I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's almost six hours a day that I don't get back. So we need to change that. We need to work on that. So I'm going to set my timer to five hours and 29 minutes. Today, our starting day, Tuesday, that's how long we're gonna attempt to read for. And that it, I'm not even gonna speak that into existence. That is how long we're gonna read for today. I just finished the second book in the Elsie Silver Cowboy Romance series yesterday, Heartless. And I still have two more books to read that are out from that series. But I think I kind of just want to take a break. And I'm really feeling thriller vibes. And I've really been wanting to read Lisa Jewell's book, Then She Was Gone. I have His and Hers by Alice Feeney, which I've been wanting to read some more of her books as well. Or I also have Riley Sager, Lock Every Door. I've been wanting to read Riley Sager as well. He just came out with a new book and I want to read some of his older books. I really liked House Across the Lake, but just for some reason this book is really, really calling to me. So I think today we're going to start this, see how far we get, and just replace my phone time with reading time. We're not going to be on this stupid thing. I have my timer, so I'm going to start it when I start reading, and then if I take any breaks, I'll pause it. Like, I'm not going to keep it running. It's just solely when I'm sitting down reading. So let's get started. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call, ADHD. Hello? Hi, yeah, this is her. for about two and a half hours. I have three hours left on my timer. I'm currently on part three. <sighs> so far this book is just really giving me like this eerie, weird feeling. There haven't been like too many big twists yet. I feel like it's just done a lot of build up. In this book, we follow Laurel, who is the mother of a girl who has disappeared. But basically 10 years ago, her daughter Ellie, they think disappeared. They don't really know what happened to her. They don't know if she ran away. They don't know if she's dead. 
They don't know like what happened. They just know that at like 10 o'clock in the morning one day when she was on her way to the library, she's just gone. It's been 10 years now and something happens where they get new evidence after 10 years. But at the same time, Laurel is still trying to put the pieces together. And then she meets this man, Floyd, who she ends up dating. And he has two daughters of his own. Floyd is just absolutely perfect. He has a daughter who's nine who looks a lot, a lot, a lot. Like it's actually scary how much she looks and acts like the daughter that disappeared. And I'm at a part now where Laura finds like a thread that kind of ties her together with Floyd and his daughter, whose name is Poppy. I love the way her writing makes you feel. I love her like thriller building. I love the tenseness and it's not too twisty, but I feel like when it kind of all comes together, it's like twist after twist. So we'll have to see if that's how this book is. But so far this book is very harrowing and just there's something about it. Like it's like that feeling of like when you know there's nothing in your closet, but it's dark and you're convinced there's something in there and that like feeling in your gut where you're scared. I don't know how to explain it, but that's kind of how this book is making me feel. I'm so nervous, but anyways, I'm gonna keep reading now. Let's start my timer again. I just started part three and it's giving housemaid vibes where whenever you start the next part, it's somebody else's perspective. And I did not see this perspective. I didn't think it was gonna be this person's perspective. So I'm very, very interested. Hmm, okay. know what day it is. It's Wednesday. I started my timer this morning, but I have been reading for a little bit now. My screen time for last week, which is my goal for today, is three hours and 46 minutes. So this morning I started my timer for three hours and 46 minutes like you guys saw. And I have been reading now for almost an hour. I have 250 left for the day. I have about 40 pages left of this book. It's all tying together. This book is more centered around like her disappearing, but also the family dynamic and the family drama from all of the different characters that are brought into this book. So it's been more of like a family dynamic book and I feel like the more that I read Lisa Jewell, the more I'm realizing a lot of her books are family like oriented and the drama and the tea and the backstory of a lot of people's families. So I'd love to have a conversation with what Lisa Jewell's childhood was like. But anyways, I'm gonna finish this book. But yeah, so let's keep reading. I'm really excited to see how this one ties up. Wait, 
I need a minute. <laughs> it's 3.06 and I still have two and a half hours left on my timer. I finished then she was gone. I've been thinking about it for a little bit and I feel like I'm gonna rate this one four stars. I really like this book. It was really fast. I like that it was just more than the disappearance. It had a lot to do with the family, but it wasn't as twisty as I usually like with thriller books. I feel like it was more focused on the family and their secrets and tying it all together. So yeah, it just wasn't as twisty as I would have liked. I still really liked it. Uh, I can't wait to keep reading all of Lisa's books, but yeah, I'm gonna rate this four stars. Since I have two and a half hours left, I'm gonna start a new book. I don't know what I wanna start, but I did just get an Amazon package in the mail and I opened her up and I got this romance book, Done and Dusted. I've been hearing so much about this book, so I'm really excited to read it. It's a cowboy romance. I don't know anything else, but all of the cowboy romance girlies are going crazy over this book. I feel like I really wanna give this one a twirl because I've just been hearing so many good things about it. It's only 263 pages. So I feel like I'm gonna fly through this book, but yeah, I think I'm gonna start this one. But yeah, I'm gonna start Done and Dusted with my two and a half hours left. And yeah, it's gonna be really good. So let's start this book. Good morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Today is Thursday, I think. Day three of replacing screen time with reading. And today's goal is five hours and three minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer. I'm about to go to Pilates and I came a little bit early to just read in the car, to roll the windows down, to get some fresh air. And I'm gonna start reading. It's 420. It's actually 419. It's, <laughs> it's actually 419. Natalie corrected me. I still have four and a half hours left to read today. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie came over and we were working on something super top secret so I haven't been reading but I haven't been on well I've been on my phone but <laughs> but not tox I wasn't on my phone toxically yeah. toxically it was productive it was productive on my phone for something that's secret so I was doing research with Nat but I have not been reading so today I will be shocked if I finish my four hour goal. If I was doing nothing for the rest of the day, I could finish it, but I'm going out to dinner and going to a karaoke bar. So I think I'll probably get another like two hours in. I don't think we're gonna make the goal today, but I was doing something good. I was hanging with a friend and dreaming and scheming and not scrolling endlessly. So today we failed, tomorrow we fly. <laughs> Literally. Tomorrow I'm finally going back to work. I know you guys were worried I didn't have a job anymore, but I promise I do. I wish I could be a stay-at-home reader. Can you imagine if you're a stay-at-home reader? That's literally the goal. Not a stay-at-home mom, a stay-at-home reader. Yeah. I got my job back because I got my passport, so I finally get to go 
fly tomorrow. So I will be flying and reading tomorrow. So I will definitely finish my goal then, but I'm gonna read for a little bit and I'll show you where, how much time I have left at the end of the day. I'm gonna go read. No free feet. Nope. Oh, get them I am a little over halfway through this book and I realized I didn't give you guys an update, but so far this book, I am loving so much. It follows this sweet girl named Emmy, who is a horse rider. She was in Colorado and went through a breakup in a bad accident while riding and so decides to go back home to her small town in Wyoming, in her small hometown. She has two brothers and a single dad. They live on this beautiful ranch. They run like horseback riding. They're about to turn a part of the ranch into like a, not an Airbnb, but like a, a bed and breakfast almost. Anyways, um, she gets home. Her first night there, she goes to the bar and she sees her brother's best friend, Luke, who she's always thought was like the bad boy, is very annoying. And so uh, they have a little moment and the story kind of just picks up right from there. Uh, I will say this book, I wish it was longer, which I've never really thought about a book before, but it kind of just truly jumps right into her being home. There's not really like a lot of backstory and you go like right in to her and Luke, which they're not supposed to like, like each other because it's her brother's best friend. But it kind of goes right into it, which I don't know. I like romance books that have the buildup, they have the backstory, they have like, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's what I'm used to. I'm like, do I actually love it or am I just used to romance books being like 400, 500, 600 pages where it takes a long time to get there. But I just feel like I kind of want more from this book. Uh, I think it is literally perfect. I'm obsessed with the characters. I'm obsessed with the family. I'm obsessed with small town Wyoming, horseback riding, all of the things. But I feel like it's just happening so fast. So it is a really fast, easy paced book. I mean, this book is 263 pages. It's not really small text either. So that's my a little update for you guys. My first thoughts, my first impressions, and I can't put it down. And I'm loving, loving, loving it. I just wish it honestly had more, which is a good thing, I guess, because it's so good, I want more of it. So anyways, let's go outside and read for a little bit. I'm feeling poop. I'm feeling poopy doopy. I've had too much time off of work, so I don't want to come back to work. Has anybody else been there? It's seven o'clock in the morning. Olivia Rodrigo's song came out last night. Uh, I've listened to it six times this morning. Anyways, I'm so excited. Also, Joseph, my husband, a new song of his came out. Let's talk about it. And also one of our best friends, Austin, he had a new song that came out last night. So it's just like music festivities over here. We've made it to Friday. We finally decided to start working. I had to renew my passport all this week. I had Cabo turns, so I couldn't fly them because I didn't have a passport, but my passport came in and today I'm flying my last Cabo turn of the month, but I obviously won't be able to film a lot because I don't film while I'm working. I will be able to read whenever I can read, but when I'm able to read, I'm gonna read. But I did wanna tell you that my goal today, unfortunately, <laughs> we have another five hour goal. So why I'm gonna go ahead and get my timer started. Also, last night I stopped the clock with 2.54 left. Yesterday, Thursday was not my day. Not my day, but that's okay. We are not gonna do anything perfectly, but this is a challenge and it is challenging. So I'm gonna set my clock for, which is gonna be weird because I always set my timer for the flight, but we're just gonna have to go with it. I set my timer for five hours, two minutes, and I'm gonna get ready and go into work. I have a tiny, tiny, tiny bit left of Down and Dusted, I'm literally obsessed with it. And then I decided to take a go at this one, Divine Rivals. I've heard so many good things about it. It's a fantasy romance. The front page says, no God, no creature, no war can come between them. I think it's like two rivals. Um, in, they both write for newspapers and they're rivals and they end up finding a typewriter that's magical and ties them together. I'm not sure, but everybody's obsessed with this book and I really wanna read it, so I brought this to start. But I will update you guys when I get back to the car. Let's see if I can do this. 
I am home from flying. It's Friday night. We just got some pizza. I'm having some wine. And it looks like I have about 2.15 left of reading today. So I read about three hours while flying today in between my flights and on breaks at work today i ended up finishing done and dusted i rated this 4.75 probably one of my new favorites i love this book so much didn't rate it a perfect five because i like i said i just really wanted it to be longer which is crazy i've never felt that way about a book and then i started divine rivals and so far i really like it it's fantasy romance but the fantasy so far has been easy to follow the fantasy follows their world that they live in where there's like two gods that were dead that come back alive that have this rivalry and they're now fighting in a war so there's a war going on and it's kind of just building that a little bit but so far the fantasy part of it has been really easy to understand because the fantasy part is like magic which i really really am liking so i am about let me see how many pages i'm into this 43 pages into this 215 left i am gonna watch some youtube and just read and try to finish my timer for the day This challenge was a lot easier said than done. Not so much because it was hard to stay off of my phone, but because life just kind of happens and plans happen unexpectedly. And when you spend almost six hours a day on your phone and you try to replace it with reading, uh, it's really hard. In my brain, I'm like, oh, six hours isn't that much. But when you try to replace it with reading and only reading, I'm like, Jesus, like how did I spend six hours on my phone? I was not successful every day. I honestly think I read Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I read four days and I think I probably successfully did it two days, but the other two days I did it. And that's because things came up last minute and then I started reading at two instead of in the morning. All of that to say, I did do this challenge. I was not fully successful, but I am still really proud of myself for trying it. And I think it's absolutely crazy that in four days of replacing my phone, I got through three books. I didn't fully finish this one in the video, but I did get a chunk of the way through. And yeah, so just to kind of recap, I started off the video with Then She Was Gone, a psychological, more family-oriented thriller. This book I rated four stars. I love Lisa Jewell. I'm finding out that her lo a lot of her books are family-oriented, but I really did like this one and then I started a cowboy romance done and dusted I absolutely loved this book I love the characters I loved just everything my only bad thing about this book is that it wasn't long enough because I love big chunky romance books there's no third act breakup which i loved i loved i loved so much they talk about deeper things in here and it's just really really good i love the small town yeehaw vibes of this book it's set in wyoming and i rated this 4.75 not a perfect five because i personally just wanted a little bit more but it's still so 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 good and then i ended off this video with divine rivals which you did not see me finish but i finished it and i rated this five stars i absolutely loved and adored this book so much uh it's considered fantasy but the fantasy part of it is really really easy to grasp and understand 
which I absolutely loved about it. In this book, you follow Iris and Roman, who are rivals. They work at the same newspaper, competing for the same job. And at the same time that they're doing this, there is a war going on between two gods. It's kind of like mythological gods, but in a made-up world. Iris's brother is called into war by one of the gods, so the story starts off with Iris's brother going into war the same time that she's working at the paper. So the war is a very heavy and big aspect of this book. Along with them at the newspaper, Iris starts writing to her brother on this typewriter, and one day somebody responds back, but it's not her brother. Oh my god, this book. Uh, she creates this romantical connection with the person that is writing back to her on the typewriter. And yeah, it kind of just takes off from there. It is beautiful, it is heartbreaking, it is sweet. It is deep and I just, I absolutely loved it so, so much. I replaced my phone time with reading time in four days and I basically read three books. That's absolutely crazy. This challenge is pretty cutthroat. You're giving up a lot of time and plans, but it was so much fun. I'm so glad I did it. It was a really good refresher on how much time I spend on my phone. Like if I just gave up my phone time, I can get through almost three books. That's absolutely crazy because at least for me, I probably read like a book, maybe two books over the course of seven days. Over the course of four days, I read three books. That's so crazy. I definitely always want to be putting my phone down and doing better, healthier things for myself. And I really love this challenge for challenging me to do just that. Here's to more reading and less time spent on my phone. And all the readers said, Amen. <laughs>